Welcome back. In this video, we're going to solve systems of equations using elimination, and we'll talk a little bit about the algebraic solutions um, and compare those to their graphical solutions, similar to what we saw in the last video. In order to solve systems by elimination, the process is listed below. And for those of you who really like the substitution method, I would encourage you to embrace this elimination method because we're going to be using it quite a bit in future sections when we work with matrices. Using the elimination method, formally they say obtain coefficients for x or y that differ only in sign. Essentially what we're saying here is we want equal and opposite, meaning positive or negative, coefficients on x or y or at least on one of your variables. When we get into multiple variables, you could have equal and opposite coefficients on z or something. Then add the two equations to eliminate the one variable, because one's positive and one negative. That one variable will drop out. Solve the resulting equation, and then back substitute the value in to find the other variable. And then you can check your solution in both equations. So we're going to do a word problem sample here. Mr. Jakes earned and invested $18,000 last summer consulting for the Federal Reserve. He invested some of his earnings at 5.6% and the rest at 6.8%. After one year, those investments earned $1,182 in interest. How much did Mr. Jakes invest at each rate? Well, let's go ahead and start by declaring our variables. What is going to be our unknowns? Let x equal the amount invested at 5.6%, and we'll let y equal the amount invested at 6.8%. And if you're wondering why he doesn't invest all at the higher rate, well, that's a good question for Mr. Jakes, and I'm sure he'll have a very valid answer for you there. So we have our x and y, we have two variables, so we're going to need two equations. So our first equation, I'm going to call it our principal equation, or the amount of money that, that Mr. Jakes is investing. x plus y equals $18,000. That's our principal equation. Then we have an interest equation. Since he earns $1,182 in interest, we can use another equation. So some of the money is earning 5.6%, the rest is 6.8%. So at the end of the year, the whoever he's investing with is going to pay him 5.6% of the dollar amount that he invests. And he, the other one is going to pay him 6.8% of the dollar amount that he invests. And he's going to get two checks at the end of the year, and they're going to total $1,182. So that equation, that interest equation, looks like this, 0.056x plus 0.068y equals $1,182. So now we've got our two equations in our two variables. I don't like the decimals in the interest equation, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to multiply that by 1,000 to get rid of the decimals. We end up with 56x plus 68y equals $1,182,000. Those are equivalent equations. They're just 1,000 times bigger than the original. So following our process now, we have our two equations. We have our principal equation and our interest equation. But we want to drop out one of the variables. We can drop out x or y. So we need equal and opposite coefficients on either x or y. You could do the substitution method here. Uh, that would make sense, solving the top equation for x and y. But we're going to use this as an example of how to do elimination. I'm going to multiply the top equation by negative 56. That's going to give me equal and opposite coefficients on x. So negative 56x minus 56y equals 18,000 times negative 56 
is negative 1.008 million. I used my calculator there. Now I have equal and opposite coefficients on x, so my x's are going to drop out. I end up with 12y equals 174,000. Solve this for y, so divide by 12. y equals, putting that into my calculator, y equals $14,000. $500. Since Y is the amount invested at 6.8%, Mr. Jakes must have invested $14,500 at 6.8%. And just back substituting into X plus Y equals 18,000, we can do the arithmetic real quick and see that $3,500 must have been invested at 5.6%. Looks like Mr. Jakes is doing a little bit of a diversification of his portfolio. Uh, assuming the 6.8 was a little higher risk investment because uh, it had the higher rate of return, he invested a little bit more there, or quite a bit more there than he did at the 5.6. Nice job there by Mr. Jakes. We've got our other possible algebraic solutions. We have the graphical interpretations that we saw in the previous video. Uh, and consistent and inconsistent. But there are other possible solutions that you can get algebraically. Let's write this down. Algebraic solutions. You could get something like 0 equals 0, or you could get something like 5 equals 5, or x equals x, that kind of thing. So something seems kind of strange. Well, those kind of answers will lead to infinite number of solutions. You will have an infinite number of solutions. So graphically, those would be, say, overlapping lines. Or something overlaps where there's many, many or infinite number of solutions. Another possibility is you could get something like 0 equals negative 7. Or you could get 3 equals 12. Okay, something that's like, hmm, that doesn't seem to make sense, or some sort of false statement, or something that is an impossibility. So as you probably have predicted by now, those types of answers lead to no solution. There's no particular solution for the system, or graphically, there's no intersection. There's no overlap on the graph of those two lines. So just some other possibilities we could get when solving a system of equations, and you'll get some more practice with this when I see you in class.